Hello, my name is Daniel Sofner. I'm a success architect based in Melbourne, Australia. And I'm putting together a quick demo to show how you can use MuleSoft to integrate endpoint systems and load data into data cloud. The scenario we're looking at is support cases. Let's imagine, as we can see here on the left-hand side, we've got a company that has two systems that handle case and incident data. We've got Salesforce, Service Cloud, but we also have ServiceNow. Now we want to bring those data from those two systems into Data Cloud. We're going to be doing this through the Service Cloud Data Bundle that loads the account, case, and contact data into Data Cloud. Now, this is something that I've prepared earlier, so I'm not going to show this in the demo. The focus should more be on what you can see here on the lower side of the screen. ServiceNow incident data have to be loaded into Data Cloud as well. And we're going to be doing that through MuleSoft, utilizing the AnyPoint ServiceNow connector, as well as the Data Cloud connector, which are both available in AnyPoint Exchange. So that at the end of the demo, we will have um, two DSOs um, representing case data coming out of Service Cloud, but also incident data coming out of ServiceNow. We will see the associated DLO. And then the next step would be, which is out of scope for this demo, uh, that you could then map uh, the two DLOs, the case DLO and the incident DLO, to a generic DMO, which represents the cases of both Service Cloud and ServiceNow. When we look at the Data Cloud screen, we can see in the Data Stream section that we already have a case data stream object loaded into Data Cloud. We were able to achieve this through the Service Cloud Data Bundle, which will load account, contact, and case data into Data Cloud. The fields you can see here are the fields that represent the case object in Service Cloud. When we switch over to the Data Lake object screen, we will also be able to see that the case Data Lake object or DLO is already present in our Data Lake instance. And then finally, when we go to Data Explorer, we can confirm that data have already been loaded into Data Cloud using the case Data Lake object. So we'll pick the object, the case DLO, and we see here that we have a handful of cases from Service Cloud loaded into Data Cloud. So the next step is now to load the data from ServiceNow into Data Cloud. Here in this development environment in, in ServiceNow, we can go to the incidents. What I've done here is essentially create a filter that only shows me the inc incidents that have a state of new, newly created. As you can see here in this developer environment, we find a total of 13 incidents that are in the state of new. Internally in ServiceNow, the different states correspond to different state IDs. In this case, the state of new corresponds to the number one. This will be important when we build the app in MuleSoft. So before we configure and run the MuleSoft app that loads data into Data Cloud, we need to complete two configuration steps in Data Cloud. The first one is something that is done here in the Data Cloud setup. As you can see here, Data Cloud comes with a variety of out-of-the-box connectors that allows users to ingest data. There's a couple here for the different Salesforce clouds, some for websites and mobile apps, and for different cloud storage providers. The one that we need, however, is the ingestion API. 
The ingestion API will be used by the mules of Data Cloud connector to load data into Data Cloud. So let's create one for the ServiceNow incidents. We provide it with a name, ServiceNow incidents. Now, what the connector needs as well is a schema describing the object and the structure that comes out of ServiceNow. I prepared that earlier. It's a YAML file describing the ServiceNow object. Now, I made it a little bit easier. ServiceNow objects usually uh, come with a sizable number of fields. So I created a um, schema that only loads nine primary data uh, from ServiceNow into Data Cloud. Uh, we're going to be looking at the assigned to field, the category, description, location, number, priority, severity, the state, which in this case should be one, which equals to new, and one field describing the date and the time when that incident was created. Now that field will become quite important in a minute when we configure the data stream. So let's save the schema. Now we've configured the ingestion API source now, and we provided it with a schema. Now we move on to the second step of the configuration in Data Cloud, which is to create a data stream, which the connector requires. We go back to the data streams tab in Data Cloud and we create a new data stream. When you open the dialog, you will see all of the sources that have been connected to your data cloud instance. In my case, it's Salesforce CRM, there's a marketing cloud instance. I've connected to cloud storage providers, Amazon S3 and Google Cloud. But for our use case, because we're using the MuleSoft connector, we need to use the ingestion API and specifically the one that we just created a minute ago. We select the ingestion API that we require, in this case, ServiceNow incidents. It finds the object or the schema that we uploaded. This is the one that we're going to use. It has those nine attributes that I just walked through as you can see here. So before we deploy that, we have to pick a category. Now in Data Cloud, you can put, pick essentially two main categories and the third one, which is other. It's engagement and profile. Profile usually corresponds to things like accounts or contacts. So data that remain relatively stable and that describes an individual or a company. Now in this case, however, we're looking at incidents, right? So these are data that are changing. There's new incidents, there's incidents that change their state. So the data cloud regards them as engagement data. We need a primary key. In this case, that's the number. In ServiceNow, it always starts with INC for incident and then a primary key number. And because we're looking at engagement data, we also need an event time field, right? A timestamp that describes when that particular engagement essentially was, for example, created. In this case, we use the created on field in our ServiceNow object as the event time field. Every time you describe an object uh, using the engagement category, you do need date time or a timestamp field in your object. So we've configured that and we now just have to pick the data space into which we will be deploying it. In this case, we're just using the default data space. Click on deploy. So here's our data stream. It is being deployed. 
once that's deployed and active, which it is now, we can now load data into data cloud uh, that will be captured in that data stream. And for that, we will be using MuleSoft. So before we can use the MuleSoft data cloud connector, we have to make sure that the underlying Salesforce org can handle OAuth flows. You can achieve that by going into the setup of the Salesforce org and type in OAuth in the search tool. And then under identity, click on OAuth and open ID connect settings. Here, you have to make sure that the first option allow OAuth username password flows is set to on. Now we are in our familiar AnyPoint Studio environment, and I've built a very simple app that essentially just retrieves all of the new incidents from ServiceNow, transforms them from the SOAP format that comes out of ServiceNow into a JSON format, and then sends through that object through the data cloud connector here it is still called the Salesforce CDP connector into data cloud. First thing obviously we need to do is configure the two connectors. So here we have the ServiceNow connector that points to a development environment in ServiceNow. That's the one I showed earlier. And we have the Salesforce data cloud or CDP connector, which I've configured as well pointing to my environment. Here's the URL, username, password, and then a consumer key and secret that I created earlier in data cloud. So those two environments are connected. I will quickly walk through this app. So we have a listener, so we can call that API locally or externally with a path called get snow incidents. In a first step, then we have a transform message that essentially prepares um, the, the payload that will be sent to ServiceNow and that describes here that we just want to retrieve the incidents that are in the state of one, meaning they're new incidents. We will feed that into the ServiceNow connector, which we've configured to just access the incident service and get all of the records. But of course, only those records that are in the state of one. Once we've received the ServiceNow incidents, we then transform them from the native SOAP payload that comes out of ServiceNow to JSON. The data weave code is available here. We've got a logger. And then this is essentially the data cloud connector. We essentially want to insert the objects, meaning the payload that we have received from ServiceNow into data cloud. Now the way to configure that is we give it a name, we use the connector configuration that I showed earlier that points to my data cloud instance. And I have to provide the source API name. So that is the ingestion API that I created earlier in the data cloud setup. It's called ServiceNow Incidents. And the associated object, which is incident. That is the schema that I uploaded shortly after creating the ingestion API. So through this configuration, the data cloud connector knows that it needs to send the payload data coming out of service now to the ingestion API in my data cloud environment. And it should use the service now incidents ingestion API and the incident object. Once that is done, we have another logger and the process is finished. So let's run this. 
I have here a Postman instance. The application is running locally on my machine. So we're calling localhost 8081 and get snow incidents as the endpoint. Sending the request runs locally and we're getting a 200 OK, which means that the Mule application has run successfully and has sent off the data to Data Cloud. Let's quickly go back to our console just to show what happened here. You can see here um, that we can see the payload here the data in JSON format that has a total of 13 incidents that came from ServiceNow and were now sent to the Data Cloud connector and into Data Cloud. When we go back to Data Cloud into the Data Stream section, you can now see the data stream name, ServiceNow Incident, with the Ingestion API connector type and currently that data stream or the update of the data stream is in progress. It means the data have arrived at data cloud and are now being processed. Once the data have been processed successfully, you will see that here in the data stream section with the status of success. You can now go into the data stream and also inspect the refresh history. So here it will show you that initially those 13 records, meaning the incidents that are in the state of new from ServiceNow were ingested. And that now we have here regular upserts, which will then further down the track, will upsert the deltas into data cloud. You can inspect those data as well, going into the data explorer you take the default data space and you select the ServiceNow Incidents Data Lake object. And what you can see here is those 13 new incidents that have come in from ServiceNow. One thing that we have to do to inspect the data is to select the columns that are relevant for us. Let's take number, priority, severity, and of course, state. So once that is refreshed, you can see these are the ServiceNow incidents. You can see them uh, from their number, starting with an I and C. Uh, they're all in the state of new. So these are the ones that we intended to ingest. And all the details that we've mapped and the details that we wanted to ingest through our Mule app have been ingested now into Data Cloud. So what did we do when we go back to our diagram? We started out by showing that we had installed or had uh, ingested all of the uh, case data from Service Cloud into Data Cloud using the Service Cloud Data Bundle. But the key of the demo was the lower part of this diagram which shows the incidents from ServiceNow that were ingested into Data Cloud using MuleSoft, uh, using the ServiceNow connector and the Data Cloud connector. So the next step now, what a user or a company could do, which is out of scope for this demo, is to take the case data lake object from Service Cloud and the incident data lake object from ServiceNow, map that to a generic case data model object, which would then contain cases from Service Cloud as well as incidents from ServiceNow. And this concludes the demo.